you're probably going to be faced with a slow drift, right? Either a slow drift uh, to the downside by a lot of names that have pretty big runs. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Okay, hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody uh, had a pretty decent uh, trading day. So we started talking about on the, on, on the weekend update that, uh, again, you want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. There was a lot of good setups coming into today and you'll see especially uh off the watch list you know you'll see the numbers that we talked about um you know pretty much throughout the weekend the game stopped to the downside amat uh nvidia tesla obviously had a just a just a ridiculous run and the one thing that i kept on kind of reiterating over and over again um is you know you wanted to make sure you start looking and start watching for some signs of the market getting tired. Now, if you look at the pre-market, um, you'll you'll see you know everything was spiking up. August got to uh, a pretty aggressive uh, start. The Dow was up. The Nasdaq was up. Everything was up, and slowly but surely, the market started losing a little bit of steam. Now, again, that's not a case for this is the market top. The market's going to zero short everything in sight. This is a case that we talked about even when we went to uh, all the way back to you know a couple of weeks back when you saw the market started getting tired after you know five six straight sessions and started losing a little bit of steam again not because the market uh, is short not because this is the top of the market it's just because the market when it goes up too aggressively too fast it starts to kind of get to the point that it needs to get its feet back under. You kind of need to breathe. You kind of need a, a little bit of rest. And when you look at a lot of names, and we started talking about this on the weekend update, we started looking for clues, right? Uh, what happens after a stock takes out of a range? What does it do the rest of the day? What happens when a stock uh, puts in an opening range highs? Let's see what it does for the rest of the day. What happens uh, when a stock takes out all-time highs. Let's see what it does for the rest of the day. And these are all signs, and this is all data that we continue to talk about and, and, and continue to kind of reiterate the point. It's not just price action that matters. It's price action that matters off of important channels. So we kind of got our answers to a lot of those questions. So for example, right, uh, Tesla broke out, you know, three days ago. Okay, the, the breakout is not at 700. The range is at 700, but it broke out at 656 and then again over that 680 level this is the last high here and today again took out that 700 level and exploded uh you know exploded to the six you know 727 level the question was what was going to happen after and if you look what happened after it's literally a six hours straight of lower highs and lower lows like literally six candles in a row lower highs lower lows then you get into a name like moderna again not that this is the end all be all but the point is again we're looking for more clues again if you look at uh what the cdc reported it said it's seven day average of daily u.s covid cases surpassed the peak of last summer it's just the headline okay it's not meant to be a, a conversation that we're about to have it's just the headline so the question is well what was it going to do after it took out its 52 week high well, all-time high so it took out its high 362 went to 365 and a change and then had a really really aggressive reversal again things we're looking for if you guys remember nvidia right i've been talking about nvidia now for you know for about a week and a half and i said look that 99 area has gotten rejected three times right it finally got above the 99 area went up about 60 cents or so and then went below again these are all kind of telltale signs that stocks are getting pretty tired again doesn't mean the market's going to collapse it's not going to go to zero but it's very very tough to wake up for tomorrow's session and after uh you do your research tonight to turn around and say look i'm 100 percent bullish uh, the markets looks great i think we're gonna rally yeah it's great you can say whatever you want but the point is when stocks get tired just like you right run a race uh you know take a deep breath you need to kind of reset and then you run another race right that's kind of the whole point of trading dissecting what's in front of you and if you start gathering information about well look stocks are strong but they're not following through stock looks great but they're not following through they're getting good price channels and aggression move out of the channels but guess what 
they're not following through. If it happens once, okay, I get it. It happens twice, that is a theme, right? So going into tomorrow's session, you know, I'm not really in love with anything, right? I can't really turn around and say, I love this, I love that. Yeah, I mean, look, is there some longs that I like? Yeah, there's a couple of longs I like. Is there some shorts I like? Yeah, some of these meme stocks, that, and we started talking about GameStop uh, over the weekend update, had a nice little uh, nice short in this, this morning, and uh, it stopped perfectly at support. We'll get to the pivots in a second. But I think more, more chances than not for tomorrow's session, you're probably going to be faced with a slow drift right? Either a slow drift uh, to the downside by a lot of names that had pretty big runs. And again, remember, they're not shorts. They're just stocks that are drifting lower. Any, you know, any news, uh, any rise into rising 60 minutes support that you're not aware of, and you're going to get run over right back to the downs, uh, back to the upside. So you can't go into tomorrow's session and says, well, Dan says the market's tied, the markets are short. No, specific names that are going to possibly break down ranges are short or short setups. But the overall market, I wouldn't call it a short. I think it just needs a break. And I think if you're going into tomorrow's session guns blazing, uh, bull biased on you know on one side of the market, I, I think you're going to be very very disappointed. And just because kind of the three examples that I gave today uh, just a few minutes ago are, are, are you know they're, they're probably going to be a pretty good landscape of the overall market. What's going to happen? Because just think about this logically. If a stock can't confirm, excuse me, if a stock can't not resume an uptrend after it, it confirms a channel, a macro channel, well, that's the first sign of the market being tired. Is it an isolated situation today that we might resume tomorrow? Okay, we'll see, right? Let the market tell us then that's the case. But if we start seeing, uh, especially early morning um, buyer strike, that's the best way of saying it. If we see a buyer strike on any spike of earnings, uh, any spike of futures tomorrow morning, that's, I think, we're going to start looking a little bit more to the downside. Obviously, still be buy bias, but just remember what we talked about in the weekend update. The, you know, the Nikkei, although it rebounded, I didn't see what it did towards the end of the day, but although it rebounded like 1.8% um, throughout the session, or at least in our morning session, uh, keep this in mind. They've been gradually going lower and lower and lower. So I, I think you have to be uh, mature tomorrow, okay? I, I don't think you need to be as they say, balls to the wall, right? Uh, pedal to the metal. I, I think it's more of a concentration day. I think it's more kind of gathering data, see what's weak, see what's strong. Um, you don't need to trade, you know, like a lunatic every single day. You don't need to trade full size every day. Just where, see where the market rotates, see where, if there's a theme that's going to be possibly measured out for tomorrow's session. And, there's, and if our favorite names kind of wake up, like in the videos of the world, like the apples of the world and start confirming channels, so yeah, then maybe we can get a, a follow through on some big, you know, big aggressive beta names. But until that happens, I, I would not be surprised if 24 hours from now, we're having the conversation that says, well, the market played out exactly how we thought. The market was in a very, very uh, tight channel, uh, constriction of channels, uh, and there wasn't really a lot of room. I wouldn't be surprised. And you know what? That's healthy, okay? Uh, the market needs to do that from time to time. Again, the market doesn't care that you're waking up with last night's erection that wants to trade everything in sight. The market's gonna do what it has to do. And if it's tired and it's giving you clues that it's tired, well, Guess what? It's tired. If it, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, I promise you it's not a rhinoceros. So it's very, very important to kind of understand what we're looking at, okay, for tomorrow's session. Um, understand that we might not have one of these explosion uh, of channels, both to the up to the downside. And I think tomorrow, just again, learn to be prudent, learn, learn to sometimes take a uh, little bit more defensive approach. And then again, if there's good setups there that confirm. Yeah, of course we're going to trade them. But if not, again, always remember uh, there is uh, another day. So let's talk about today's pivots. Again, not a lot, right? Not a lot. You had to like kind of focus out of the box. A lot of the moves came in on one individual channels, and then they kind of faded for the rest of the day. But again, you don't need many trades. So let's talk about it. So obviously, uh, this was last night's uh, focus list. You had Tesla, that 700 area. Everybody saw what it did by now. But remember, guys, again, I, I, you know, the word breakout, breakout is a very, very subjective word. For me, Tesla broke out at 655. This was three days ago. Today, it confirmed that $700 channel. Uh, NVIDIA, I took NVIDIA, went up 50 cents, went down 50 cents, went up 50 cents. I finally you know, took a small loss in this thing. Um, I think it was about 60 cents or so. I'm going to re revisit it tomorrow. Again, the one cool thing about the video, and we were seeing this now the last two, three days, they are coming for the 205 weeklies where 
with a lot of repetition. It's not just one or two bets. The, the aggressive nature of the bets is not exactly where I need it or would like it to be, but I'm definitely, definitely continue to watch that channel. Uh, Neo, um, you know, had a nice move today. Neo uh, was a play literally off of Tesla, 45.30 uh, needs to build. Here was Neo off the daily list, right? Neo took out 45.30, went to about 47. Again, short term, uh, $50 call buyers coming in. Uh, Apple, I still like. Uh, mRNA, not a big move at all. Uh, 62, 63 needs to build. Went to like 65 and change. AMAT, I forgot to look at. For some reason, I forgot to look at today. Guys, I totally apologize. I forgot to look at it. If you took the trade, congratulations. I completely missed it. Uh, 4150, 142 needs to build. Here was AMAT. Uh, AMAT really had a nice move. I can't believe I forgot to, I, I literally forgot the stock. Um, AMAT took out the 41 and a half, took out the 43, and traded all the way up to 45 and a quarter. I, I, for some reason, I just forgot to, to look at it again. Uh, FISV did nothing. Uh, GameStop was actually pretty, pre, pretty good. I actually shorted it uh, at 158. It was the opening range low. I uh, covered it right near the bottom of the range in the 55s. See, I think the stock goes lower, right? I, I think the stock goes lower here. The only reason it stopped, I actually shorted off this range here, and it stopped right at the 55 level. So I shorted off, off the 58. If it could get below this 55 area, guys, there's a lot of room to the downside. They were coming for uh, short-term expiration in the 140, uh, 130 uh, weekly contracts. So let's keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. At least this, there's definitely a value trade uh, set up there and this thing has been kind of like grinding lower grinding lower but uh, if this thing loses the support I think there's a lot of room down so let's keep an eye uh, on that and again the natural pivots 99 again only went up like 50 60 cents Apple never got to the 47 level uh, Moderna spiking up a little bit right spiking up a little bit off the 63 ran up like three dollars nothing there um, Amazon for experienced traders watch the green to red only went up only only went down like seven eight dollars uh, that's actually nothing for Amazon. AMD is actually a pretty good watch. Uh, watching for a blow off top in the morning session. Incredible three day run for experienced traders only after the first move up. Let's see if it goes green to red. Note, this is not a pivot. This is just exhaustion. And, you know, that's a big move. I mean, really, really big move on AMD. Uh, and you could see the, hold on a second. Uh, you could see what happened here uh, at the open, right? You see here what happened at the open and here's the market, you know, the market opened up and just, just got destroyed. Uh, green to red went down like two and a half dollars, but this thing is so damn strong, so resilient. It actually went back to red to green and spiked up all the way up to 110. Just, just a monster, monster stock. But again, if you took that green to red washout this morning, uh, was really good. Uh, FISV never got to, uh, 117. Uh, BTBT, nice move. Again, for all you guys who trade these smaller cap names, uh, 990, 10, uh, needs to build. Here was, uh, BT, what is it? BTBT, right? BTBT. So here's the whole 990, 10 area. Uh, went to 11 and a quarter. Nice move, uh, there for all you guys who love these smaller cap names. Uh, nice move there. You know, great reversal on AMD. Take on the way up on BTBT. Uh, GameStop, right. So 158, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, again, take on the way down, went all the way down to 55. Uh, I covered in the 55 is my last piece. You know, nice move there. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, again, here comes the weekly 205, right? And it, it got above the 199. That was kind of my case. Uh, you know, things are getting tired, right? Like really, really tired. Um, and this thing can just kind of just, just stalled out here. So yeah, nothing there, but I'm going to still watch this thing for tomorrow. Uh, Tesla for a bounce never got down to the 706, 707 level. And I think that's it. So look, going into tomorrow, do I love anything? I, I don't love anything, right? I, I, I think maybe tomorrow if there's early weakness on Tesla. Maybe they could trap uh, off the bottom range, maybe give a trade for a red to green move. See, I, I think Tesla, just because it had such a huge run, uh, just over the last three days, it needs rest. It really does. It really needs to, you know, consolidate, maybe even back test uh, the bottom range here. But it, it needs, it's tired. It really is tired. Uh, and the moral of the story is for this thing to go. And again, there was some really, really aggressive call buying uh, for the August, for the September 750, 800 calls. So the money flow is there. I just think it needs a kind of a couple of days to kind of relax, to kind of get its win together. And just like mirroring the market, I think the market just health-wise uh, needs to kind of um, you know digest a little bit to see where the next directional buying is. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.